Hello isopod fans, this is Wally from Supreme Gecko, Supreme Isopods. Do you keep isopods? I know you do. You're here to find out about what you need to do about permits. Do you have a collection of a, about 10 isopods? Do you have a collection of hundreds of isopods? Are you considering selling at a reptile show or online? Well, let me tell you, the USDA can come in and confiscate all of your isopods and issue a fine if you don't have permits. Have you looked into getting permits? Is the process a little bit confusing because there's information all over the place? Well, I'm here to help. Watch this video and let's make the process easy. During my isopod permit journey, it really took me a lot of time, but that's because I wanted to get everything precise and accurate. And I wanna send out a special thank you to Dr. Carlos Blanco. What a huge, huge help he's been in getting these permits to me. Hey, I really wasn't trying to scare you with the USDA coming in and confiscating all of your isopods and finding you, but that is the reality. But a lot of isopod keepers and breeders don't have permits and they've been selling for quite some time. To be honest, I did too, but why risk it? It's really easy and it's painless for the most part. And I'm going to help you get through your permits here in this video. The process is fairly easy, but there are some gotchas, and we're gonna work through those. It does take a little bit of time because you have to enter in the application for 50 states. Well, 47, you don't have to put it in for your state and Alaska and Hawaii. Now, somebody recently asked me, hey, I've got a show coming up and I need to put together my request for permits. How long does it take? And I indicated that it's taken me a few weeks they said that they have a reptile show tomorrow and they wanted to know what they could do to get those permits quicker. From the moment I submitted my very first application to the point that it was reviewed and approved and came back to me as accepted, took about three weeks. So what are these permits? These permits are issued by the USDA APIS organization. That's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Services. And the permits are Plant Protection and Quarantine, PPQ, 526 and they are federally regulated, not at the state level. The permits are issued for each state and they help regulate the importation and interstate movement of soils and other potentially infected host materials. That's right, that includes our isopods. These permits help us identify how our isopods can be transported across states, the material that can be used, the containers that can be used, they even outline our facilities and containment methods. Also, they regulate how we should dis dispose of these isopods. They also outline the methods that we can dispose of the materials that we keep our isopods in. Why do we need this control? Well, isopods potentially can be an invasive species to our environment. And what's an invasive species? Well, have you ever heard of zebra mussels and their impact on the Great Lakes? How about the Burmese python and its impact on Florida? Have you heard the impact that the Asian carp has had on the United States waterways? And did you know that the Asian carp can grow quickly and reproduce abundantly with females laying up to 5 million eggs at a time? And how about the impact that feral hogs have had on the south? But these are little tiny isopods. What kind of damage can they do? Well, they can certainly have agricultural impact. And how about the impact that they can have on native species by outcompeting them? And talking about impact, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell all so you don't miss another one of these videos. If you like this video, hit that like button. Let me hit some quick clarifications before we start talking about how to submit your permits. First of all, this discussion will completely exclude anything about containment facilities. Also, permits are not required for owning isopods. If you're buying and selling isopods within your state, permits are not required. If you're selling to customers outside of your state, permits are required. If you're buying from isopods from a customer outside of your state, permits are required. Permits are also not required for any native species to your state. Exotic species not on the exempt list from APIS do require a containment facility. What's a containment facility? Well, it's a special facility with special doors and special ventilation. Here's a special tip. When you're shipping your isopods, don't ship them in soil. You can ship them in these types of materials, paper towel or coconut koi fiber. Now, 
gosh, I don't suggest either one of those. So here's another material. Ship them in sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is a perfect shipping material. Finally, with all the formalities out of the way, let's talk about how to get your permits. And again, I want to thank Dr. Carlos Blanco for all of his help in providing the information to help me get through these permits. From this point on, I'm going to show screenshots of how I applied for my permits through the USDA APIS site. I'll go ahead and leave a link to the site down below in the description. Once you log into the site, click on the resources and click on the permits. Here you'll see both e-permits and e-file system. You want to select e-permit system. You'll be taken to another screen, the e-authentication screen, where you'll be asked to enter the agency. Click on the little arrows to the right and select the U.S. Department of Agriculture. You'll be asked to con confirm and save that site. Then you'll be taken to a screen to enter your login or create a new account. Select create a new account. From there, select customer, hit continue, enter in your email address. I'll put in your email address at gmail.com as a general email, but enter in yours. The e-authentication process will send you an email to your email box. Once you receive that email, open it, go down and click on the link to take you back to the USDA site. This will bring up the e-permit site where you can create, renew and amend your permits. Here we'll want to create a new permit. Select plant protection and quarantine, then select PPQ 526 permit to move live plant pests. You'll be taken to a new screen where you'll want to read the information. Click on the provided links if you need to, and then hit the continue button. Here you'll be taken to a screen where you can select new, amend, and so forth. For our first application, we want to select new and press continue. On this next screen, select no. This application does not contain con confidential business information. Then press continue again. And at this point, we're actually in creating a new permit. Let's walk through the seven different pieces of this permit application. On the applicant screen, fill in all the required information, those starred with the red star. Then press continue. The second screen is articles, or another way to say the isopods that we want permits for. Go ahead and press the enter new articles button. This next screen will contain all of the information pertinent to the articles or isopods that we'll be applying for. You'll see two required pieces of information on the where was the article originally collected, select originally collected from within the continental United States. On the line intended use, select commercial resell for breeding and sale. Now let's jump down to the lower half and this is where we're going to put in the isopods that we're applying for. Here you can press the down arrow to find regulated articles by category. or you can simply type in the isopod name on the first line and press go. Once you press go, that will take that isopod name and put it down into the step two of the portion of the screen. Highlight that isopod, press the double right arrows in the middle of the screen, and that will push it over to the box on the right, indicating that that's one of the isopods that you're going to apply for. Now we're going to select our second isopod, and you can go back up to that name on the left and replace it completely, or you can simply replace the species name. Hit the go button, it drops down to the box on the bottom, hit the double right arrow, and it pushes it over to the right hand side box. It's always important that that right hand box is filled in with all the isopods that you're going to be applying for. Let's quickly go through all of the isopods that I'm selecting. Now, if you type in the name incorrectly, you'll certainly see that it doesn't match one of the isopods on their list. Once you have all of the isopods listed on the right-hand box, you can press the Continue button. This is going to take us to the article's Edit Detail screen. Again, we're going to see line items that have the red asterisk on them, and those are required. So on Life Stages, select Any. For Quantity, we're going to put Various. For unit of measure, we're going to put specimens. For established in U.S., we're going to put yes. For major hosts, we're going to put N slash A. For additional accompanying materials, we're going to put culture medium. For material explanation, we're going to put substrate and press continue. This takes us to the enter culture designation screen. Simply press enter on this screen. This takes us to the article summary screen. And here we press done entering articles. 
This takes us to the third permit screen called Origination Points. Here we select movement types of interstate movement and we put approximate dates of initial import or movement. I put today's date in there. Press the continue button. This takes us to the interstate origination point summary. Press single state with address. On the origination point address screen, we're going to see all of our articles or isopods. Press check all and you'll see that all of them then become selected. Scroll down a bit and in origination address, select the state that you're from. In mailing address, make sure that you have the state as a state that you're in. Scroll down a bit and in method of shipment, make sure that you select air freight, land freight, air mail, and express delivery. In number of shipments, put various. In frequency of shipments, put during permit life. Then press the continue button. On the next screen, the interstate origination point summary, you'll see the state that you've selected. Press done with origination points. That brings us for the fourth screen for the permits and that's the destination. At this point, I pressed enter to show the errors on the destination address, you can put a star in the account, in the address line one, in the city, in the zip code, and most importantly, in state. You'll want to put the state that you're going to actually be sending the isopods to. At this point, I selected Colorado, but later on in the video, I'll show how you can select the other 46 states that you'll need to include in your permit requests. Scroll down a bit to destination contact and we'll do the same thing in first name, last name, phone, email, address line one, city and zip code, put a star and then in the state for designation contact, put in the same state that you entered above. Then press continue. This will take us to a screen to enter in our fifth permit screen, that's proposed measures. Select enter new proposed measures. On this screen, in the proposed measures for, select all articles. Under escape prevention, select other and select cups with vented lids. Under comments, select cups with vented lids slash mesh to prevent escapes. In final disposition method, select other and in descriptions, type in remain in captivity until sold or death. Press the continue button. The next screen will show all of our articles or isopods. At the bottom, select done with proposed measures. The next screen will show the sixth screen in the permit process and that's the attachments. Simply press continue. The next screen shows the seventh screen in the permit process and that's certify and submit. Make sure you read this screen thoroughly, then press the certify and submit button. Okay, we're done with one state. And now you're asking me, Wally, we have to do that for the other 47, 46 states now. That's gonna take a lot of time. Well, luckily there's a copy option in this whole process that makes it so much easier. Let's talk about that now. As we've already done one state, all that we have to do here is go into the e-permit screen. And in the middle of the screen, you'll see the My Permits Responses. You should see that very first state that you did. It should have a permit number associated to it. Let's go ahead and click that. The next screen will show the application. Under the copy application column, you'll see document icons. Go ahead and click that icon. It will bring up the screens that we just saw. Go ahead and go over to destinations and click that box. We'll need to change the state in both the destination address and the destination contact section. Use the drop down arrow, select the state that you want to select next in both the destination address and the destination contact. Press continue, then press the certify and submit button. That's all you have to do for that second state. Now follow it through with the other states that you want to submit an application for, and you're all set. At this part of the process, your application has been sent off to the USDA. They're going to review it and send you back a response. That response could indicate that the application isn't correct or incomplete, and you'll see that email in just a second. Otherwise, if everything looks okay, you'll get an email back asking you to review the application and to sign off on the application. Let's take a look at that email. This email will absolutely require a response. Click on that long hyperlink and it will take you to the next screen. You may be required to select the agency and to log in again. The next screen that you see should be My Messages Inbox. Now this screen should show you all the applicant review condition messages. What we'll be searching for is any that requires a response of yes. 
Here's one. I'm going to go over to the left and click on the applicant review conditions. This next screen shows the applicant review conditions and on it you'll see all of the articles or isopods. Here's an important point. Go down to the authorization statement and find the to state that this is going to be available for. We'll use that to state in just a moment. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Now you'll need to read every single section very closely. Ultimately you'll want to select the agree button for all of these different sections and press the send button. Again, read every single section here. Some of these sections pertain to the shipment requirements for your isopods and the disposition method that you'll be using for your isopods and their material in your facility. After you hit that send, go ahead and double check the previous screen to make sure that that application has a required response of no. This first email is the e-permits permit issued for application and it will give the application specific number. This email will read you have been issued a response for the application XXX. And don't forget you may get a denial response for one of your applications. Make sure you do review those. At this point you are done with your permit application for all of your states for all of your isopods that you've submitted for. But here's a really, really important point to help you with the shipping process or the sales process of your isopods. For every one of your approved permits, you'll want to save a copy of that to your hard drive. Go ahead and go back into your permits. Select the very first one and you'll need to keep track of these. Confirm the state that this permit is for. Hit the save button and you can go ahead and save that permit to a designated folder on your hard drive. I like to save these approved permit documents on my hard drive for future reference. You'll also need these permit numbers for each individual state when you sell your isopods either at shows or sending them out in a shipment to your customers. Also in the email that you get for the approved permit you'll have an environmental awareness letter. Save that to your hard drive too because you'll need to print that out for every sale that you have either at a reptile show or sending out isopods in a shipment. Hey, we have some incredible isopod content on this channel. I hope that you watch one of our videos now. I'll put a link right here. I hope that this video helped you put together your permits. If you have any questions, make sure you leave a question down in the comments below. Thank you for watching.